Welcome to a new video about a 90s rap legend. If the name of our current legend means anything to you and you've ever been interested in Uncle Ace, then stay tuned. There's probably some information in this documentary that you don't know about him. As already revealed, this episode is about the New York MC legend Master Ace from the Juice Crew. You ready? Then let's go. Chapter 1. Childhood and Youth Duval Clear was born on December 4, 1966 in Brooklyn, New York. On the same day as Jay-Z just three years earlier. He grew up quite normally in Brooklyn and went to school there. At this stage, rap is just a hobby, not anything serious. In eighth grade, he prepares to move to Atlanta because his mother is trying to get her dream job there. So he is forced to start his high school phase there. Unfortunately for the mother Yvonne, the job does not live up to expectations and preparations are made for a return to Brooklyn after just a few months. If this job and everything around it had worked, we probably wouldn't have a Masta Ace today. With over 20 releases and so many classics that accompanied and shaped our youth and other moments in life. Because by the year of 95 at the latest, he will be world famous through his breakthrough song, Born to Roll. But before that happens, he lives a completely normal, average life. He graduated from high school in 83. Duval then studied marketing at the University of Rhode Island from 84 to 88, and also graduated. During this time, his attention was drawn to another facet of hip-hop, graffiti. He never bombs, except for one evening in 1993. That was the only time he went out with other writers. He tells this story on the Breaking Records Radio YouTube channel. You can find it linked below. But since the cops in the area started asking questions shortly after the action, he becomes afraid of being busted because at that point, he already has two solo albums and a few music videos out and therefore could be recognized quite quickly. And that's why from then on, he keeps a healthy distance from illegal bombing. Chapter two, rap career. The decisive moment that turns the hobby into the start of a career is that in December 86, here Ace wins an MC or rap contest in Queens and thus a recording session with Marley Marl. You'll find out exactly who that is in a moment. In any case, Ace is aware of who he is dealing with at this point and spends half a year making phone calls to Marl until the first meeting finally takes place in the summer of 87. Tough persistence out of pure love and passion is likely to come across as more likable than annoying to like-minded people. Anyway, it works, and they end up in the studio, where the young master ace also meets MC Shan, Craig G, and Cool G Rap, who is about to record his very first song. Ace is allowed to stay there for six hours. Of course, at some point he starts rapping. Marl and the others give him his props, and so they invite him to the next session. At the second session, he then becomes a member of Marley Marl's, now legendary rap group The Juice Crew, which is housed by his label, Cold Chillin' Records. The Juice Crew includes members MC Shan, Big Daddy Kane, Biz Markie, Roxanne Shante, Tragedy Gaddafi, Cool G Rap, Dimples D, Glamorous, TJ Sean, Grand Daddy IU, Mr. Magic, DJ Polo, and Craig G. But the original Juice Crew formation has nothing in common with this one except member Marley Marl. However, the superior Curtis Blow was in the first crew, so that was also awesome. But damn, even without Curtis, a group full of legends. Some of these legends had already received the status by the end of the 80s. For example, MC Shan, who became very well known through his battles with KRS-One, even if he is officially considered the loser of this battle. Big Daddy Kane, who has been considered one of the first technically advanced spitters since the 80s. Biz Markey, the entertainment machine who DJed, rapped, and beatboxed like no other, rest in peace. As well as Roxanne Shante, who, as a teenager, was simply dissing all MCs in the 80s. KRS, LL Cool J, Kangol Kid, Run DMC, and so on and so on, basically everyone. But let's get to the beginnings of Marley Marl. Mr. Magic, well known for his radio show Rap Attack, hired Marl as a sidekick in his show, 
which was broadcasted on the New York major radio station, WBLSFM. At that time, this was pretty much the only radio show in the world where you could hear rap music. From there on gaining nationwide popularity, Marley started his own label, Cold Chillin' Records, and forms his first group. After switching most members, the crew's releases are designed in such a way that they basically release answer songs or diss songs against other rappers and rap crews. First release, Sucker DJs from 1983, by Marley's girlfriend Dimples D, an answer to the Run DMC song, Sucker MCs. Even if the expected or desired answer does not come from Run DMC, the Juice Crew's path to success is formed this way, and the recipe is now applied to their songs like a formula. Rap is playing an increasingly larger role in Ace's life. Nevertheless, he pushes through and gets his university degree. Then, afterwards, he digs deep to get his career going. But his 1990 debut album, Take a Look Around, flops from an economic perspective. The second finished album, Shelf Life, was canceled, but was subsequently released as a mini edition in 2013. But allegedly, he is dropped from the label due to the minor sales. Chapter 3. Solo Career So now, he is forced to leave Cold Chillin'. Personally, I first became aware of Ace in 1994 on the Brooklyn Dodgers collabo song with Special Ed and Buckshot from the Boot Camp Click, one of the craziest and biggest rap crews ever. After a while, Delicious Vinyl emerged as Ace's new distribution partner, and on May 4, 1993, the second Masta Ace album called Slaughterhouse was released. The constellation has changed somewhat. Masta Ace establishes the group Master Ace Incorporated, short Masta Ace Inc. Members are Ace, Lord Digga, Leche, Paula Perry, IC, Reginald Ellis, and Unique. But before we get to the first classic album, here is some information about the other band members of Master Ace Incorporated. Lord Digga aka Man Digga, he has released several singles and at least one EP called The High Plains Drifter EP. Among other things, there are older, unreleased songs. One of them is a demo song with Ace from 92. Unfortunately, Lord Digger never dropped an album. At least I couldn't find anything about it. Then Paula Perry. From 96 to 98, she dropped several singles but unfortunately never an album, I thought. But the internet proved me wrong once again. Because on December 23, 2021, after a wait of over 23 years, her album, Tales from Fort Knox, was released. An absolute 90s boom bap album that just came out two years ago. Definitely sounds very, very good. Puts you straight back into the late 90s. By the way, the link is in the info box below. And Lee Shea, who released her solo debut album, Rhythm and Beats, in 97 and was quite successful with it. R&B on 90s boom bap beats. She has also had her own podcast for almost 10 years and is also quite successful. Her and Ace's combined net worth is estimated at approximately $6 million. But I can't confirm whether the numbers actually are correct or not. By the way, Ace married fellow rap artist and homegirl Lee Shea in 2001. Together they have a daughter, who's just out of high school and probably getting ready for college. Or even is already in college by now. Chapter 4. Breakthrough Let's get to Ace's breakthrough album, Sittin' on Chrome. It is released on May 2, 1995, and quickly spreads around the world. It will quickly become a classic New York rap album, even though the beat selection also has a West Coast-like sound. Just like the lead single, Born to Roll, which was released in January of 94. You heard it back then and thought, he was definitely from the West Coast, but nope, Brooklyn NYC. The song was already a single on the previous LP. It was simply recycled, renamed, and put on another beat. The previous version of 93 was named Jeep Ass Nigga. Further singles are The INC Ride, Sitting on Chrome, and Turn It Up. The album will quickly become an underground classic. Chapter 4 Huge impact on me personally, 
and has accompanied me since the age of 17. A total of 16 songs, of which I only find three or four tracks, not as tight as the others. It managed to hit the charts, but then, silence. You just don't hear about Ace anymore. 96 nothing, 97 nothing, nothing for six long years. Chapter five, second attempt. Finally, on September 18, 2001, his fourth album, Disposable Arts, drops. It's released over J-Core Records. Actually, it was supposed to drop on September 11th, but the date was understandably changed. We all know what happened that day. A great concept album, one of the best overall in rap and definitely among his LPs. He himself stated, it would forever be his favorite album of his legacy. If you like 90s rap and you still don't know this album, then please, take a break right now and listen to it online immediately. I can't recommend it to you enough. Singles are Don't Understand and Acknowledge. Acknowledge is a diss song against High and Mighty, but mainly against Boogeyman, also known as Dice Raw. The battle reached. It's peak when they had an a cappella battle against each other, where Ace had choked and momentarily forgot his lyrics, but that didn't really damage his career. Solo album number five, A Long Hot Summer, will be released on August 4th, 2004 through M3 Records. The singles are Good Old Love, Beautiful, and The Grind. During that time, I traveled around Germany a lot and also went to a lot of after-show parties. Until this day, the DJs still play his songs again and again, simply because they are related as classics. But as with MC8, you can see a high label fluctuation with Ace. He's a real hip-hop old-school attitude guy, and his music reflects that too. True school rap hasn't been mainstream for a long time, but Ace always stayed true to himself and did his own thing in a very ignorant way. His rap style can be described as quite simple. Simple flows, quite relaxed, always at least good and solid, but always with new and innovative song concepts, even double to triple rhymes. And he never really breaks out. He doesn't really scream or get louder or more emotional, but rather seems laid back and quite rational when he raps. Evil tongues would now say monotone, but that wouldn't fit either, because the dynamics arise within the lines and their meaning, not so much in the performance. Like when you read a book, it reads monotonously, but it's the content that counts. He almost never has cheap or convenient rhymes, but always good content and concepts. And he's just an honest guy who's also likable and raps very well. And his beat taste usually suits me very well, just a dope MC. And this is where Uncle Ace really restarts his career again. His next solo albums are Son of Yvonne, released July 17, 2012, The Falling Season, on May 13, 2016, and A Brooklyn Story, on November 9, 2018. It's completely produced by Marco Polo and features guests like Lil Fame from M.O.P., Elzai, Faro Monch, Smith & Wesson, Styles P., E, M, C, and more. Brooklyn Story is my favorite album of 2018, period. By the way, the title is actually written in the old spelling of Brooklyn. In my eyes and ears, there was no better rap release in 2018. Just a really dope and well-known Back to the Roots vibe. Chapter 6. Legacy. Till today, he has built up a huge discography, once in a chronological quick run, since we have already covered the albums, the collabo releases are coming up next. Ace has accumulated some of these since 2008, once in order. The show as EMC. EMC are the rap duo Punch and Words, consisting of the MCs Punchline and Wordsworth and Master Ace. E squared equals MC. I think you know that, right? In 2009, Arts and Entertainment with New York underground legend Ed O.G. drops, and in 2014, The Turning Point EP as EMC, in 2015, The Tonight Show, also as EMC, as well as the compilations Hits You Missed Volumes 1 to 6, consisting of mostly unreleased songs that were created between 95 and 2001. 
followed by Grandmaster Remix and Rarity Collection, as well as Shelf Life Part 1 and 2. By the way, all Master A singles are listed below, everything nicely chronological. Most video singles are available on YouTube. Chapter 7. The Disease What you maybe didn't know about Ace. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2000, and even kept this serious illness a secret until a certain point. On Europe tour, the entire car was searched by the authorities at a checkpoint at a border. Only here does producer and friend Marco Polo became aware of it, and Ace allegedly talked to him about it for the first time. Ace explains his circumstances and at the same time sees this as a sign that from now on, he should own up to his illness and make it public. For him, this moment was like a sign from above so that he stops keeping it to himself. On the Brooklyn Story album, he and Pharaoh Monk even made a song about MS, in which Monk is the disease and Ace is fighting or battling it. It's amazing what a blatant burden some people have to carry with them which we have no idea of. This happens in life more often than anyone could believe. Hats off to Ace for still remaining so creative and not letting anything get in his creative ways. Well, what else can I recommend to you? There are really good interviews about the creation of some albums. Take a look at the description. There you find all the links. Chapter 8. Master Ace Today. I just think it's amazing that the man is still active and I'm pretty sure there will be released more music by Master Ace. I'm really looking forward to it. After 2018, several Master Ace features, singles and music videos came out. 2021. The song My Way with Benefic Shents and Imp Confidence, featuring Phantasm by The Cella Dwellers. 2022, Umzi, featuring Master Ace, Indestructible. And the last single, on November 28th, 2023. Life Music with Marco Polo, Strickland, Speech and B. Smitty. Also, Ace has collaborated with some European rappers such as Crow Knight, Cool Savage, DJ Q Fingas and Shuko from Germany, Frankie from Bosnia, Prago Union from Czech Republic, Carpe Diem from Norway, Nifu from Switzerland, DJ Achilles from Sweden. If you are interested in keeping up to date with Ace, Look for him on the platforms of Twitter, now called X, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Just dig a little on the net for yourself and you will find a lot. Back in the days, we always had to do it like that. No one died from it. If you've watched this far, please reward me with a like for the 35 hours of work that were put into this video and will never be paid. Only your support can acknowledge this time and work. You can't imagine how much this helps me and my channel. Thanks in advance. Most of all, thank you for your time. For opinions, requests, or suggestions for more videos about 90s rappers, please comment. Master Ace will forever remain a rap legend. And as he continues doing music, he will only solidify his status even more. Also, Eminem has exposed himself as a big fan of Master Ace several times. For example, in his book, in interviews, and also on songs. They even have a song together called Hellbound, from the year 2000. Master Ace has a worldwide impact and is loved all around the world. By the way, I was at Master Ace's concert in Hanover, Germany in February 2023. You can also find that video on this channel. Link in the info box below. I hope you enjoyed the documentary. Until the next video, one love and peace out, mofugga. Fugga. Fugga.